Good afternoon. I've selected an urgent question which will be taken as the first item of business today, but as a result, uh, the decision time will be postponed until 5.15. I believe all members have been notified by email. So, we turn to the urgent question, Liam MacArthur. Thank you, Officer. To ask the Scottish Government what its response is to reports that the merger of the British Transport Police in Scotland and Police Scotland uh, is to be delayed. Cabinet Secretary Michael Matheson. We are committed to delivering the benefits of a single command structure to provide integrated infrastructure policing in Scotland. A safe and secure transition to the full integration of British Transport Police in Scotland and Police Scotland is our aim and a clear focus on public safety is paramount. The Joint Programme Board set, out to over, set up to oversee the integration has been advised by Police Scotland and the BTPPA that operational aspects of the integration will not be ready for April 2019 as planned. Ministers have therefore agreed that a replanning exercise should take place in the coming months to ensure all aspects have a clear and realistic delivery plan in place. As part of this, we will ensure that we take advantage of the opportunity to enhance communications with staff, officers and rail op operators about the merger. Liam MacArthur. Thank you. It's the case that SNP ministers forced through the merger of British Transport Police and Police Scotland despite serious concerns and overwhelming opposition from BTP officers and staff and despite clear warnings from HMICS about a lack of detailed business case on the benefits, disadvantages and costs involved. DCC Livingston has now warned that these unresolved issues mean integration cannot be achieved on the Scottish Government's terms, quote, without compromising public safety. Given these concerns, will the Cabinet Secretary now accept that the Joint Board has been handed a poison chalice and that this politically driven merger should not go ahead until a proper business case has been published, scrutinised and approved by this Parliament? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, Sign off, so let me uh, deal with a couple of factual issues in the first place. Um, the idea that we forced through this uh, proposal uh, is somewhat bizarre given that we are a minority yeah. government and had to require the support of other parties in this chamber. I do recall, actually, at stage one, the Liberal Democrats actually supported the proposal yeah. uh, and changed their position uh, some way uh, through the process. It's hardly forcing something through a uh, Parliament presiding officer. In relation to the HMICS uh, report that the member made reference to as well, can I also point out to him is that that was a report which was uh, relating to matters back at the beginning of 2017, actually February, March 2017, uh, prior to us introducing many of the details that we then produced for Parliament when it was considering the legislation going uh, forward. And since then, there has been a significant amount of work uh, taken forward. And I think it's also important to make sure that the comments that were made by Deputy Chief Constable Ian Livingston are not taken out of context. And let me quote him directly, presiding officer, because I think the way in which Mr MacArthur has sought to try and interpret them is somewhat misleading. He stated, and I quote, over the last few months, We've been assessing the feasibility of delivering integration by April 2019. and It has become clear to Police Scotland that there are unresolved issues, which means effective operational integration cannot be achieved by the date without compromising public safety. Independent consultants have endorsed our position on this matter. The issue that DCC Livingston is highlighting is the assessment which has been made by Police Scotland on their sta state of preparedness in this matter does not allow them to be able to deliver it by April 2019. And that's why they brought forward the proposal to the Joint Programme Board on Tuesday of this week, setting out that they should undertake a replanning exercise in order to look at setting a new integration date. And that's exactly what the Joint Programme Board agreed at the request of Police Scotland and the British Transport Police Authority. Lee MacArthur. Thank you. So the government was repeatedly told that its deadline was unrealistic and its proposals are unrealistic. DCC Livingston has now confirmed that and that is somehow taking his comments uh, out of context. The Scottish Centre for Crime and Research has published a report today into the impact of integration on BTB officers and staff in Scotland. Their survey found 83% were unsupportive or very unsupportive of the merger, leading to 64% having given serious consideration to leaving policing because of the merger. One responder with over 30 years experience in the BTP said the service was being, quote, destroyed for political reasons, adding, it is this political motivation which has angered officers most. Uh, another said that the merger was, quote, more transformation at an already turbulent time 
within Police Scotland's short history. Given this damning indictment of the Scottish Government's plans, does the Cabinet Secretary really believe it's sensible to proceed with a merger that commands the confidence of a mere 7% of BTP officers and staff? And does he now regret refusing to consult on any other options put forward for delivering the Smith Commission recommendations? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, Sign officer, let me uh, pick up an issue about the date which was set. The date which was set for the integration uh, being taken forward was one which was agreed with other parties. Uh, it wasn't one which was imposed by the Scottish Government. Uh, so the member is factually incorrect on that matter uh, yet again. Uh, can I also just highlight to him uh, as well the issue about the benefits that will come from the integration of uh, British Transport Police into Police Scotland as creating that single command structure opening up aspects to uh, specialist resources within Police Scotland that we don't have within BTP uh, within uh, Scotland as well, making sure that we have a, an infrastructure arrangement here in Scotland for policing of it, which protects it from the plans which the UK government have, which is to abolish uh, British Transport Police and integrate it with uh, civil nuclear and also with MOD policing and to create national infrastructure uh, policing, which would leave us in a position which would be even more vulnerable uh, and potentially only leaving uh, Scotland with any form of railway policing uh, on its own. And what the member seems to often ignore, though, is that when the Smith Commission and the subsequent legislation uh, to implement the powers that were to be devolved to the Scottish Parliament uh, was taken forward, is it places a requirement on the Scottish Government or places on the Parliament to be responsible for railway policing. We therefore need to put a structure in place in order to achieve that. And the member makes reference to uh, previous uh, alternative plans. The reality is that all of the alternative plans leave us in a situation which creates a confused picture well, there's a clear lack of direction around who exactly is responsible for railway policing in Scotland because list of responsibility yeah. would still would be with the Transport Secretary in London. The BTPA, yeah. which is appointed by the Transport Secretary, would still be responsible for doing that, yeah. despite the fact I have no doubt that we would have Mr MacArthur and others coming forward here demanding that Scottish ministers are responsible for an area of policing which actually ultimately is the responsibility of ministers in London when anything went wrong. So by providing a clear line of accountability, which is what we deliver through uh, having integration into Police Scotland, alongside providing opening up aspects to the specialist skills that we have within Police Scotland as well, will help to support us in delivering first-class railway policing in Scotland under a single command structure and also making sure we can deploy specialist assets to support railway policing as and when it's necessary, other than what we have at the present moment, it, when it is requested uh, through special arrangements. There's a large, uh, uh, several members have pressed their buttons to speak. Um, if we can get uh, very short questions and short answers, we might get through some of them. John Mason first. Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer. I wonder if the Cabinet Secretary would accept that the public do not understand that we can have one police force for a railway platform and a separate police force for a road a few yards away. It is not joined up. And cab can the Cabinet Secretary reassure me and the public that he is committed to joining these forces together? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, Mr. Officer, I have, um, I have, uh, I have got four, I've got four train stations within my own constituency. And the reality is that when an incident occurs within one of the uh, uh, train station environments or thereabouts, it is a local police, uh, police Scotland to respond to these matters. If there's a requirement for some sort of specialist input from BTP, then that request is then made. Just in the same way in which the local commander would actually put in specialist requests, if there's a missing person that needs air support for searching for someone, they will request that uh, additional uh, support. So the reality is for many people on a day-to-day -day basis, when it comes to having to police matters around railway stations or the environments of railway stations, is it is Police Scotland officers who deliver that. We uh, continue to be committed to taking forward the uh, legislative uh, agreement by this parliament to have an integrated a single command structure uh, for railway policing in Scotland with the BTP being integrated into Police Scotland. And for the vast majority of the travelling public, uh, the reality is that they will want effective policing to be delivered no matter whether they're on a road, railway or anywhere else. And that's exactly what we intend to deliver with integrated structure. Liam Kerr. Thank you, officer. The SNP didn't listen to the Scottish Conservatives when we said this was unsafe, unnecessary and unwanted by virtually everyone connected with Scotland's railways. Yeah. Now they have been forced into an embarrassing, humiliating U-turn, yeah. having told this chamber only four weeks ago that a delay would be, and I quote, preposterous. The Cabinet Secretary's claim that two years was a luxury has been totally discredited. Given that we now know that eight in ten BTP officers and staff oppose the merger outright, 
Will they listen to them and consider calling the whole thing off? Yeah. Cabinet Secretary. Presenting officer, we will create a national infrastructure police force, bringing together the civil nuclear constabulary, the Ministry of Defence and British Transport Police to improve the protection of critical infrastructure such as nuclear sites, railways and the strategic road network. Zain officer, these are the words from the Scottish Conservative Party's manifesto last year and the UK Conservative Party manifesto last year. The very hypocrisy of Mr Kerr to come to this chamber and try to kid on that he does not intend to abolish British Transport Police does him no favours and yet again just shows the depth of his amateur politics on show in this chamber. And, President Officer, when he makes reference to, I said that uh, two years was a luxury, he is yet again wrong in that matter. It was Police Scotland and it was ACC Bernie Higgins who said that. Yet again, an example of the amateur nature of Mr Kerr's politics when it comes to these issues. General Officer, as we have made very clear, and as is very clearly not, that it's not within the ability of uh, Mr Kerr to understand, is that we want to make sure that we deliver the most effective infrastructure policing here in Scotland, and that's through a single command structure. As he set out in his own manifesto yep. just last year, Scottish here in Scotland and for the rest of the UK. These are robust exchanges. Robust exchanges, let's not make them personal. Daniel Johnson, please. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Um, Liam, Kerr, uh, uh, sorry, Liam MacArthur already made reference to the research published today by the Scottish Centre for Crime and Justice Research, which uh, had uh, responses from two-thirds of serving BTP officers. And it stated that there was a deep strain of scepticism, cynicism and opposition towards the integration of the British Transport Police into Police Scotland. So will the Minister therefore use this pause he has announced to listen to those voices of frontline officers and halt this merger? And if not, what does he say to those officers about why he is ignoring their professional frontline opinion? Yeah, yeah. Secretary. So, no, sir, as we said, we, re we remain committed to the integration of BTP into uh, Police Scotland as was agreed by this Parliament. And what we have under the replanning exercise that's now been taken forward by the Joint Programme Board is an opportunity to look at some of the issues that still need to be uh, resolved. And as I said in my opening comments to the question that was asked by Mr MacArthur, as part of that, it will allow us to take advantage of this additional time to enhance our communication with staff, officers and with the rail operators, operators around the benefits of integration and the merger. And that's exactly what we'll take the opportunity to do to address some of the issues that members who are within BTP presently have around the integration plans. John Finney. Uh, thank you, President Officer. Uh, I support the pragmatic decision of the Cabinet Secretary. Um, you, you constantly refer to integration, Cabinet Secretary, and IT and the integration of the existing um, forces that uh, make up Police Scotland has been a challenge. Now, Police Scotland leads in counter-terrorism in Scotland. There's no suggestion to me other than that that would con continue and th that uh, the plans are in place to deal with things. But is there any any um, hitherto unknown factors which would impact an operational efficiency in the future which have led to this decision, please? Cabinet Secretary. It was an officer, um, it, the integration around IT stuff is a key part of making sure that there's a smooth transition to the integration of uh, BTP with uh, Police Scotland. That's one of the issues that Police Scotland are giving considerable uh, consideration to. The member is right when it comes to issues relating to counter-terrorism. Uh, Police Scotland has a lead in this matter. I've made the point in this chamber before uh, when, uh, when we went to critical, uh, it was Police Scotland that have the lead on these issues. Uh, BTP have no armed officers capability within Scotland. They've got very limited capability around specialist assets. Most of that is provided by Police Scotland, as was the case when we went to uh, critical. Uh, and a number of the operational issues which are being worked on by Police Scotland in partnership with BTP is to make sure they work through all of the various scenarios. Uh, to ensure that there is the required operational arrangements in place within Police Scotland to pick up any of these matters as and when they are necessary. And that's one of the issues that Police Scotland have reflected on over the last couple of weeks and looking at the progress that they've made to date is to identify where they think there, are conti or there continues to be operational uh, sensitivities, where there are risks and what they can do to then mitigate that. Then the replanning exercise allows them to reflect in that whole process and to input plan plans in place to ensure that appropriate measures are put in place to deliver these issues once integration takes place. Rona Mackay. 
Thank you, Presiding Officer. Does the Cabinet Secretary agree that this decision demonstrates communication between the Joint Programme Board, Scottish Government and UK Government is effective and working well? Cabinet Secretary. Presiding Officer, um, there's been some sort of suggestion as though that this is uh, some sort of diktat that's been taken forward on the part of uh, the Scottish Government uh, with this measure, which is clearly wrong given the parliamentary support that was required for the legislation. But equally, uh, the planning and integration arrangements are being taken forward on a joint cooperative basis. Uh, Scottish Government, UK Government, BTPA, uh, BTP, Police Scotland, Scottish Police Authority are all working collectively together to ensure there is a smooth transition to the integration of railway policing in Scotland. And that will continue to be the case. And uh, the very fact that issues of concern were raised by uh, the BTPA and Police Scotland around the timeline from their own reflections on where they were at in being prepared operationally, uh, taking them and escalating them to the Joint Programme Board. The Joint Programme Board responded to them in agreeing that there should be an extension or a period of uh, reflection around replanning and then looking at having an extension to the integration time, in my view, makes complete sense. No doubt had that been ignored, members in this chamber would say it's outrageous that it wasn't uh, taken into consideration and acted upon. So that's exactly what the Joint Programme Board is there to do, is to look at the risks, the planning, the progress that's been made, and to continue to take action as and when it's necessary to ensure there's a smooth, safe transition of railway policing into, into Police Scotland. And Jamie Green. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Uh, this is an important point. If the report out today bears true and two-thirds of BTP officers do leave the service as a result of the merger, which they've indicated they may do, does the Cabinet Secretary not accept that this would be a huge loss of expertise and experience in this force? And will he publish full analysis of the drawbacks of his proposed merger, as, has, as he has been asked to by Her Majesty's Inspectorate? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, Sign officer, um, uh, he may not be aware, though, the HMICS report uh, was before we'd actually published our explanatory notes in the policy memorandum that went with the legislation that sets out these various measures in it. So it predated uh, when that information was actually placed in the Scottish Parliament. And the member may want to go away and have a look at that if he's keen to be informed about it in greater detail. Uh, in relation to the survey results, um, I've got, uh, you know, I don't uh, underestimate some of the concerns that members within BTP will have around the uh, significant change that will come about as a result of BTP being merged into uh, Police Scotland. Some of these were the same concerns that came about at the time when we moved to a single force with the eight legacy forces concerned about what the impact would actually be and have on individuals uh, in addressing these matters. And as I already set out to the member, is that we'll take advantage of the opportunity we now have with the replanning process that's been taken forward uh, to double our effort, redouble our efforts and to enhance our communication with staff, officers uh, and rail operators. And there's already a significant amount of work been undertaken by their representative bodies in partnership uh, with the Scottish Government to try and provide them with as much information as early as possible about future plans and how it will be going forward. But the member will welcome the fact, I have got no doubt uh, he will welcome the fact, that the British Transport Police Federation and others have welcomed the approach that the Scottish Government has taken to this issue yeah. and the decision to allow the replanning exercise to be taken forward as it will off offer an opportunity to their members uh, to get some reassurance around some of these issues. So the very concerns that the member seems to be uh, particularly concerned about are the very issues that this replanning process will allow us to refocus on and to address and the Federation for British Transport Police members has actually recognised that. Thank you. I'm conscious there are three more members still wishing to ask questions, but it's time to move on, I'm afraid. Uh, so that concludes the urgent question. We'll move to portfolio questions on rural economy and connectivity.